Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. We are on our way to the Guadalupe River near Seguin where the search continues this morning for a man who disappeared underwater after he and a woman saved two children from drowning. Coming up on GMSA where authorities say he was last seen. Plus, the search for a suspect continues following the deadly mass shooting in Austin that injured more than a dozen people, one of them which is now dead. And outside with live cam, hope you had a good weekend. We'll see if there's any increased rain chances around South Texas as we go into this work week. We'll talk to Mike Osterhage coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is June 14th. Thanks for joining this morning. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, and when you step outside, be prepared for the humidity. It's still around. Let's see if there's any change at all. What's coming this weekend? What's going on, Mike? Not uh, not really too awfully much. By the way, uh, Flag Day today. Happy Flag so Day. Display the uh, Stars and Stripes. You probably. have your, so, your of Stars course, and Stripes cufflinks. Stars and Stripes cufflinks on. So um, there's a, it's going to be hot today again. Yeah, boy, it was, it was pretty hot over the weekend. Yeah. A little bit above normal, up mid 90s yesterday. But a uh, very small chance for a couple of showers, thunderstorms way northwest in the hill country later on today. One or two may decide to sort of wander into the hill country, but um, that's about it as far as any rain chances today. We're at 79 right now. Everybody is in the 70s on this map, and yeah, the humidity is there. It's on the plus side. It's not quite as humid as what it was a couple of those days last week, but we still have a heat index right now of 82 here in town. Same thing with Stinson. Feels like 80 at uh, Canyon Lake as of right now, and mold is still on the low side. Kind of peaked a little bit late last week, but the drop back down over the weekend and throughout the rest of today, we'll make it up to 88 at noon. Some of these um, lingering clouds this morning, then more sunshine later on today. And again, one or two of those storms northwest, far northwest hill country uh, like Valverde County, maybe into portions of Edwards County, and one or two could mingle or could wander into the hill country. So we'll just uh, keep an eye out for that. Also, um, there's still that little disturbance churning down there in the Bay of Campeche, and we'll see what the uh, Hurricane Center has to say about that. As of right now, wouldn't really have any direct impact on us, but we'll take a look down there and see what's ahead for the rest of the week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. Search continues this morning for a man who disappeared in the Guadalupe River yesterday afternoon after he and a woman jumped in to the water to save two children from drowning. The Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office found the 22-year-old woman last night who initially went under with the man. She did not survive. Our Sarah Costa live near Seguin and FM 1117 with the latest from the Sheriff's Office. Sarah, were the uh, two children saved? Good morning, Mark. Yes, fortunately, those two children who that man and the woman jumped in after, they were able to successfully hand off those children and they got to safety. Uh, but the search continues this morning for that man who has not been found at this time. Obviously, that search halted last night and will continue when the sun comes up. But here's what we know so far. The man was at the river with his three children in the area near the bridge at FM 117. Two of his children got caught up in the river's current. He jumped in after them. Two, 22-year-old Cassandra Kendrick was with another group nearby and decided to jump in and help the man. The father of the children was able to reach both of his children. He handed them off to Kendrick, who was able to successfully hand them off to another person who was able to get the children to safety. Then the sheriff's office says the man began to struggle under the water and the woman went after him. A group of people near the water say they saw both the man and the 22-year-old woman go under the water and never resurface. That was around 5 p.m. The search then began for the two of them with the help of several surrounding authorities walking the river upstream, hoping the two were able to get to safety. Around 845 last night, the Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office says Cassandra Kendrick's body was found by divers and she was pronounced dead on the scene. At 10 p.m. last night, first responders halted the search for the man and will continue this morning when the sun comes up. Now the identity of that father who was able to save his children has not been released at this time. And like I said, the search will continue when the sun comes up this morning. Live from Guadalupe County, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah.
In your morning headlines, one of the 14 victims of this weekend's mass shooting in Austin has died. Austin police confirmed 25-year-old Douglas John Cantor, who was a tourist visiting from New York, died in the hospital around noon yesterday. News of Cantor's death came just after Austin police confirmed they'd arrested a juvenile suspect in that shooting. At last update, that person has yet to be charged. Police are still looking for the second suspect involved in the shooting, which happened on Austin's 6th Street Bar District. We know both suspects are male and of the 13 others injured, 12 were reported in stable condition and one other in critical. Authorities believe the shooting stemmed from an argument. President Biden makes his entrance at the NATO summit today. The president will begin his day meeting with leaders of the Baltic states regarding the threat posed by Russia, China and recent air piracy in Belarus. Later this week, the president meets with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Geneva, Switzerland. Ahead of that meeting, Putin gave an interview to NBC in which he said he hopes to work with Biden, but also laughed off a question about being a killer, a term used by Biden to describe him. The NATO leg of the trip comes after a busy weekend in the UK where he attended the G7 summit, met with Queen Elizabeth on Sunday. The U.S. is edging closer to the Biden administration's goal to vaccinate 70 percent of adults with at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine by July 4th. So far, the CDC is reporting 64 percent of American adults have received at least one dose of the vaccine and more than 309 million doses have been administered. More than 143 million people are fully vaccinated now, which amounts to about 54 percent of the U.S. adults. The CDC reports 1.2 million doses have been reported reported since Saturday for a seven day average of a little over a million doses a day. Ned Beatty, the Oscar nominated character actor who starred in a half century of American films, has passed away. His role has included Deliverance, Network and the original Superman movie. Among others, he was viewed as a booming, indelible presence in even the smallest parts. He was 83. According to his manager, Beatty died yesterday of natural causes at his home in L.A., surrounded by his friends and loved ones. And time now is 436 and it's about 79 degrees right now. So ahead, how a San Antonio police officer trying to honor a fallen officer by continuing a program that helps keep kids out of trouble. Also next in your morning sports, a racer with big ties to San Antonio wins at the Detroit Grand Prix, plus another win for San Antonio Missions Baseball. And more of that coming up in your morning sports. Outside with live cam, let's get the day and the week rolling. You're starting it the right way with GMSA. Time for a look at morning sports. Move from Mexico to San Antonio with his parents. Started in go-karts and now Pato Award is once again in the winner's circle after a great final push at the Detroit Grand Prix. With 11 laps to go, Romain Grosjean had a fire on his left front light. He runs over to the nearby course workers and gets a fire extinguisher so he can put it out himself. When the race resumed, Award was running, there's that light right there. He was running fifth and methodically weaved his way through the remainder of the field. He passes the leading car with two laps to go. The two actually touch tires, but Award stays on line. We get a great view of the pass from right from Award's seat coming off the tires as they touch. From there, he cruises to victory, winning by nearly seven full seconds. Award becomes the first repeat winner of the NTT IndyCar Season Series. Afterwards, he celebrated by diving into the fountain to celebrate a well-earned victory. Now to Missions Baseball and everything slowly returning to normal this past week. We got to see a pretty full Nelson Wolf Stadium here in San Antonio. Take a look at the video sent to us by the Missions on Tuesday. Pretty awesome to see fans come out and support the Missions. It's been too long to see the Wolf Pack like this. Far too long. Uh, check this out. Friday night, a woman catches a foul ball with a plastic storage box full of cotton candy. There it is. Great grab. And then she does it even better by giving it to a kiddo nearby. There she is. There you go, little guy. Have it. Uh, missions didn't do so bad either. Midland, uh, they were in attack mode the first inning and pulled out to a 2 0 lead. But in the second, San Antonio responded uh, with scoring five runs on six hits. Missions go on to win 12. To six. This week, missions stay at the Wolf for another home series. This time, they welcome Northwest Arkansas to town. Series runs tomorrow through Sunday. Congrats. Yeah. Time now, 441 and about 79 degrees right now. He's using his position as a police officer to prevent kids from getting in trouble. We'll tell you how coming up next. And new details on a scare in the air. Next watch as passengers and crew members hold down an unruly passenger after he threatened to take down the plane. 
And welcome back. It's about 444. Passengers on a Delta jet rush to subdue a person who allegedly threatened to take down the plane. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on that scare in the air. Watch as passengers and crew members on this Delta flight hold down an unruly passenger after authorities say he threatened to take down the plane. He uh, clearly had some sort of breakdown. The pilot making an urgent announcement. He very forcefully said, uh, I need all able-bodied men to come to the front of the plane immediately for an emergency. Very quickly, half the plane was up and in the aisle and <laughs> headed toward the front. The passenger quickly restrained. The plane making an emergency landing in Oklahoma City, where it was swept by police. As air travel increases, the FAA is seeing a spike in passengers misbehaving. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what the FAA is doing to hold unruly passengers accountable. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, he's part of a team of San Antonio police officers who helps keep children out of trouble through sports. His name is Officer Julio Cavazos, and he's next on What's Up South Texas. He tells the 19's Japanese Gray why helping the community is so important for him. We are inner city officers working with inner city kids. What'd I say, right? What? I said you're going to keep them? Anything that I could keep these kids engaged in outside school activities besides drugs, violence. Ah, this is San Antonio police officer Julio Cavazos. During the pandemic, he became active with the department's PAL program or the Police Athletic League. The program was established in 1990 to help kids stay out of trouble. Julio helps kids with baseball, football, CrossFit, boxing, and even esports. There's a reason why he's yes. passionate about building yes. a relationship with the underserved youth on the West Side. Growing up in this neighborhood, I had a uh, lot of distrust for the police. Um, my parents had a lot of distrust for the police. Julio never thought he would ever become a part of the police department, but he changed his mind after his friends convinced him to give it a try. My dad came home and he saw the cadet uniform and he said, yes, sir. And my mom said, do we hope get said policia? And he goes, ah. Slowly but surely, his parents saw him grow into a man through the department. And then he met his partner, Officer Miguel Moreno, who also grew up on the West Side. He had, he had this mannerisms of him that I miss. And he uh, would poke at me <clears throat> to uh, better myself. At age 32, Miguel was killed when he and Julio were shot while investigating vehicle burglaries July 29th, 2017. While in the hospital with two gunshot wounds, Julio made Miguel a promise. I would keep, keep him alive some way um, and have people learn from it. He's doing just that, bridging the gap between law enforcement and the community through the PAL program. We're not guns and badges. We're, we're people from the neighborhood. We're, we're not cops and robbers. We're, we're friends. We could stand on equal footing and we could see each other. Hey, coach, your mind if I get you on video? He was the, uh, the better man. And why I'm still here, I don't know. But I don't want people to forget him. For What's Up South Texas, I'm Jaffney Gray. Thank you very much, Jaffney Gray. And let's go ahead and check in with Mike to see how he's doing on this Monday morning. It is wonderful on this flag day and uh, it's going to be hot again today. You know, temperatures, we were, we were spoiled there for a long, long time. And now we're kind of, you know, getting back to it and then actually slightly above normal. So, you know, it's 95 yesterday, normal high 93, which is not that bad. I mean, if you're within two degrees of the, uh, the average temperature and uh, we've had a lot of beautiful sunshine out there and some beautiful sunrises. Great uh, KSAC Connect picture, and uh, this view is very nice over there at 410, looking off to the, well, kind of to the, uh, just a little to the east of the airport. The airport's right over there, and uh, no problems out there. we got our morning clouds hanging around here, and humidity, we are at least continuing to go through the afternoon cycle. Yes, it is very, very humid. We didn't have much of a breeze yesterday either, so it was just that hot air, especially when I was doing work in the garage and there was no circulation. But uh, by later on this afternoon, we will see dew points drop down a little bit, so a little bit more pleasant. We go through that same cycle, so we're getting into that cycle now. Morning clouds, more humidity in the afternoons, 
and we'll do the same thing tomorrow as well. Heat index readings still with that little bit of humidity and temperatures up in the uh, mid 90s. We're going to be uh, pushing at 100 and uh, some low hundreds, especially down to the, the southwest. Lots of water, lots of sunscreen. The reason for or the, the situation that we're in right now, high pressure is off to the west of us. And so we've got this northerly flow around here, and this is very good at getting these little bits of energy and throwing them down in our direction. That's what's going to be happening later on today. And this computer model, look way up there to the uh, northwest, those little disturbances. Most of this is going to be staying well out there to the west, but a couple of those may decide to wander a little further to the east as we go into the evening hours with one or two of them here and there. And that's pretty much going to be the extent of it as far as any rain chances basically off to the west. All right, satellite picture. Not much is really going on. And then down here in the Bay of Campeche, the Hurricane Center, we've been looking at this ever since last week. A couple of computer models were trying to pick up on this and Hurricane Center now says there's about a 30 40% chance by the end of the week that this could develop into a sort of tropical system. Now, as far as long range uh, computer models, nothing really going on here next couple of days, maybe a few showers well off to the east. East. And this particular computer model, as far as the movement of this low, if it does indeed start getting churning down there in the Gulf of Mexico, obviously it's going to be a big rain producer, maybe a couple of showers there along the coast. But most of this and right now everything would take this and keep it well off to the east, perhaps a couple of wraparound showers well off around Houston right there. But uh, as of right now, this wouldn't have any uh, sort of direct impact on us. So forecast today, we've got clouds this morning, partly cloudy skies, by noon, 88 degrees. It's going to be hot again. And by the way, this is the last week of spring. Officially. Meteorologically, it's summer, but spring. So anyway, 95 for high <laughs> temperature today, mostly sunny skies. A couple of uh, showers, a couple of thunderstorms way off to the uh, the northwest. One or two of those may try and wander into portions of the hill country. Uh, pretty much you can't rule it out tomorrow, maybe on Wednesday with this northwesterly flow in the atmosphere. One or two of those uh, storms out there and then going in toward the weekend. Of course, summer officially begins Sunday evening. But what happens on Sunday, Stephanie? Father's Day. Say it louder. Father's Day. Don't Thank forget. <laughs> we won't forget. Yes, we're going to make sure that we broadcast that very loudly. So. All, yeah. all week long. Of course. Reminders. Yes. yes. Almost to an annoying degree. Just for yes. Fun. Yes. 452, about 79 degrees. Glad you're with us. And still ahead, a look at how In the Heights did at the weekend box office. Plus, American Idol gets an audition start date. Let's review class. Your lottery numbers. Pick three, three, one, three, fireball four. Daily four numbers, four, five, four, one, fireball five. Cash five, 11, 17, 23, 29, 33. Lotto Texas, five, 14, 27, 36, 49, 50. And your Powerball numbers, 8, 25, 34, 38, 41, Powerball 10, Power Play 3. Good luck. A not so good weekend for a hyped stage musical turned movie. Plus, a first look at a revamped game show on ABC. For the latest of what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Lights up on Washington Heights. It's a disappointing box office debut for In the Heights, based on the Tony-winning Lin-Manuel Miranda musical. Just 11.4 million bucks, far below the expected $20 million bow, but good enough for second place. It's also streaming on HBO Max. There are people out there. People worth saving. A Quiet Place Part 2 reclaimed the top spot in week three of release. The sci-fi horror sequels now earned $185 million worldwide. Don't you know so many Michael Bolton doing what he does best on Monday night's premiere of Celebrity Dating Game on ABC. The singer and co-host with Zoe Deschanel says he was a fan of the 1970s original. And I remember the set and the feel. They really captured that this time around. It just felt like it was going to feel good and fun. And it was from day one. August 6th is the just announced date for the first round virtual auditions for the upcoming season of American Idol. And Boy George is 60 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And time now is 456 and about 79 degrees right now. Still ahead on our morning newscast, President Biden makes his entrance at the NATO summit today. We'll tell you about how he plans to help counter uh, provocative actions by China and Russia. 
Plus, Microsoft showing off new reasons to invest in its newest Xbox consoles. We're going to have a preview of some new games ahead in Tech Bytes. We're uh, heading in the right direction when it comes to the pandemic. We're not completely out of the woods yet. Ahead on GMSA at 6 later this morning, some creative ways to keep your kids active and safe this summer. And so far from our cameras, things look pretty quiet outside, but we are going to be checking in with Samuel King after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A father saved his two children from drowning in the Guadalupe River last night. However, he went underwater and has not been seen since. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA, where authorities say he was last seen. We're days away from that high stakes one on one between President Biden and President Putin. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, how the president plans to address the Russian leader. Outside with live cam, it was not a bad weekend. It did warm up in the afternoons, but overall fairly pleasant. Mike has an update on the work week forecast, says keeping tabs on what could be some minor developments in the Gulf of Mexico. Hi, good morning. It is Monday, June 14th. Glad you are with us. Let's get the day rolling. I can't wait to talk to Samuel King. He's home on Aww. GMSA <laughs> today. Back. It's good to have him. He's just right there. We just want to hug him, but we're going to leave him alone for now. <laughs> oh, go run into the shot over there. OK, Please. now we can. <laughs> now we no, can. Anyway, hey, <laughs> meet me over here at the, at the wall, Sam, when you come over so we can anyway. <laughs> Poor uh, Sam's yeah, trying to work. <laughs> he, he came, clicked his heels and said there's no place like GMSA, right? Yeah, he's yeah. like, oh, my alarm went off. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's warm and humid this morning, and we got up to 95 yesterday, just two degrees above the, the average, the normal high temperature. We're starting off on the warm side, though. We're at 78 right now, and humidity dew point, it's below six or below seven, below 60. That'd be nice, below 70. Uh, so it's not like just ridiculously humid out there, but you know, it's still pretty darn humid. 95 for a high temperature today. And notice I've got a small little chance for a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. That's going to be way, way out to the uh, the north. Northwest. The aquifer did go down three tenths of a foot on yesterday's reading, and the allergens, at least everything is on the low side. Mold finally started coming down as the ground continues to dry out. Heat index right now, yeah, it does feel hotter than the actual air temperature. Heat index is at 80, so not anything too outrageous. We will, though, uh, have heat, in heat index readings about, oh, you know, 20 degrees higher than what these numbers are right now. So we'll be looking at hundreds here in town and uh, low hundreds down to the uh, southwest. So the forecast today and throughout the day, warm and humid, obviously, this morning. We'll have a couple of, you know, mostly sunny skies, but then a couple of those thunderstorms developing well off to the northwest. And one or two of them may try and kind of uh, meander into portions of the hill country, but that would be few and far between. About the same situation tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. We've got this, the way the flow is kind of set up around here, these little glitches in the atmosphere may touch off a shower or two off to the uh, northwest. And basically sunny and hot for the week ahead. But we do, like Mark alluded to, have to keep an eye on what's going down, what's going on down there in the uh, southern Gulf of Mexico and see if indeed something tries to develop and if it has any impact on us. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority! Strike up the band, Samuel King. What's up? Hey, good morning. Hi, everybody. Good to see you, Mike, and everyone. Stephen taking a couple of days off, well deserved. So I'm filling in for him, and the alarm worked. So that's good. I'm here. And this is 1604 at uh, Babcock. They had some construction overnight, and there will be more construction uh, this week on uh, 1604 during the weeknights as they get that project, that big project up there on the northwest side in Tagir. Let's head over uh, to the wall. They had some construction crews, saw the last vehicle head out there. So that is all clear this morning. Looking at the overall map, we do have one crash on the board. This is Eckerd at uh, Babcock, uh, excuse me, at Hebner Road. Excuse me, thought it was Babcock. Babcock's right there. This is Hebner. This is Eckerd, and that is where uh, the crash is this morning. So if you're in that area, watch out for that. Also, if you're coming out of New Braunfels and Comal County, there is uh, some slowdown south of Schwab Road to watch out for this morning. Still only 28 minutes coming out of New Braunfels into downtown San Antonio. 26 minutes on 281 at the north side where we had some construction this weekend as well. Just about a half an hour coming in from Seguin. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. Top story this morning. Search continues right now for father who disappeared underwater after saving his two kids from drowning in the Guadalupe River yesterday evening. A woman who also jumped in to help save the children was found by a dive team last night. She did not survive. Sarah Costa is live at FM 1117 near Seguin. And Sarah, at this time, we understand the search has stopped for now. 
Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Yeah, that search stopped around 10 o'clock last night. It's very dark out here, and authorities say that search will continue when the sun comes up this morning. But we are at the area here at FM 117 near the Guadalupe River. It's a bridge where that man and woman were last seen underwater around 5 o'clock last night. But here's some video from earlier from the scene earlier last night. The man was at the river with his three children in this area near the bridge at FM 117. Two of his children got caught up in the river's current. He jumped in after them. Then 22-year-old Cassandra Kendrick was with another group nearby and decided to jump in and help the man. The father of the children was able to reach both of them. He handed them off to Kendrick, who was able to successfully hand them off to another person who was able to get the children to safety. Then the sheriff's office says the man began to struggle under the water, and then the woman went after him. A group of people near the water say they saw both the man and the 22-year-old woman go under the water, and they never resurfaced. That was around 5 o'clock last night. A search then began for the two of them with the help of several surrounding authorities walking up and down the river stream, hoping the two were able to get to safety. And then a dive team was called in and around 845 last night. The Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office says Cassandra Kendrick's body was found by those divers and she was pronounced dead on the scene. Now, the sheriff's office has not released the identity of the father who was able to save his two children, and they also did not say how old the children were. As we get updates on this developing story throughout the morning, we will update you on air and online. Live from Guadalupe County, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. This morning, President Biden moving on to the next major part of his European trip. The president arriving in Brussels, Belgium, ahead of his meeting with NATO leaders. That meeting preceding the high-stakes summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin, now just days away. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, flags flying at NATO headquarters in Brussels as President Biden arrives for his meeting with NATO leaders. He's expected to reaffirm the U.S.'s commitment to Article 5. An attack on one member is an attack on all. The group will debate adding language to Article 5 that includes major cyber attacks, a topic of concern ahead of President Biden's high-stakes one-on-one with Russian President Vladimir Putin. In an interview with NBC, Putin agreeing with the leader of the free world on one thing. We have a bilateral relationship that has deteriorated to its lowest point in recent years. I think he's right at its low point. President Biden preparing to come face to face with the man he once said had no soul, recently labeling a killer. Putin reacting with laughter. <laughs> In that meeting, President Biden is expected to press Putin about recent cyber attacks that have targeted staples of American life. On the flight to Brussels, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan pushing back on the idea that President Biden would do a cyber criminal prisoner swap with Putin. He didn't say prisoner swap. What he was talking about was accountability and the idea that responsible countries should hold, should be held accountable to not harboring cyber criminals and to bringing cyber criminals to justice. That meeting comes as the latest ABC News Ipsos poll finds 49% of Americans have a great or good amount of trust in Biden to negotiate with Putin. Overnight, President Biden wrapping up his G7 trip in Cornwall, England, where G7 leaders offered a global plan to end the pandemic and to fight climate change. Before leaving the UK, the president and first lady met with Queen Elizabeth for tea at Windsor Castle. Overnight, President Biden says he hopes to find areas where the U.S. and Russia can work together. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers and your help finding a suspect who robbed a Wells Fargo bank on the northwest side happened last Thursday in the 3000 block of West Woodlawn. SAPD says around 4 p.m. a man walked into the bank, put a note on the plexiglass in front of the teller that said he had a bomb demanding money. The teller gave the suspect an undisclosed amount of money and ran away. Going east on West Woodlawn, rather, yeah, east on West Woodlawn. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers 210 224 stop. You could get a cash reward for information you provide. Today is World Blood Donor Day, and it's dedicated to raising awareness about giving blood and to thank donors for their life-saving gift. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says today also carries a deeper meaning as our local need for blood is currently outpacing donations. Adrian Mendoza with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says there are many reasons why blood demand is up. 
we've seen as much as 20% increase in the need for blood because people are going back into the hospital after having delayed surgeries and also our community has grown over this last year. While blood donations help patients going through treatments and those involved in accidents, Mendoza says it's critical during tragedies like the one that happened in Austin this weekend. And one of the locations you can donate today is the William J. Brenham High School. Donations will be accepted from 1 to 6 p.m. To schedule an appointment, you can call 210-731-5590 or you can head to SouthTexasBlood.org. Time check, just about 10 minutes past the hour, 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, many Apple stores will soon be dropping their mask requirements for vaccinated customers. We're going to tell you when. Watch out for snakes. We'll hear from an expert at the San Antonio Zoo why you may be seeing more of them around. <laughs> I hope not. Taking a look outside with live cam. Uh, 79 degrees, a little humid out there and expecting another warm day. But hey, it's June. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 513 now and a big warning for everyone, but especially all the kids playing outside more now that school is out. You may be seeing more snakes around, but it's not just because of the recent rain. We talked to the director of animal care ectotherms at the San Antonio Zoo, Craig Pelkey. He says the number of snakes has not increased. The difference is the rain brought cooler temperatures, which is refreshing to all of us, including the snakes. And that's why we are seeing more of them because it feels good for them. They can be more active more parts of the day, including day and night. When it gets really hot out, then they just relegate, they're relegated to staying out at night when it's cooler. Yeah, these guys are cool. Pelkey says, if you see a snake, the best thing to do is to give them some space. They want to be left alone. He says, if you do that, they are completely harmless, no matter if they're venomous or not. Our next hour, we'll share some tips in case you come across a snake. I can do that. I can give them lots of space. You have lots and lots of space <laughs> yeah. as you run the other way. Exactly. 514 on your Monday morning. I'm glad you're starting your day with us here on GMSA. Coming up next, we're going to tell you how many millions of dollars an unidentified bidder spent to join Jeff Bezos' upcoming flight into space. Plus preview of new games just announced for Xbox game consoles. With Simply Safe's Video Doorbell Pro, you'll know if the person at your door is friend or foe. We're just a late night cheese pizza with extra meatballs. With my smart lock, I can let him in. Ah, uh, entree vu. And I can lock up from right here. Same time tomorrow. So take it from an expert. Get Simply Safe and protect home like a pro. Visit simplysafe.com for a limited time offer. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA approved over the counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. We do it every night. Like clockwork. Do it. Run your dishwasher with Cascade Platinum and save water. Did you know certified dishwashers use less than four gallons per cycle while a running sink uses that every two minutes? So do it with Cascade, the surprising way to save water. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple is reportedly ending mask requirements for vaccinated customers at most retail stores. Bloomberg also reporting that the new policy could start Tuesday. The tech giant is also ditching mask requirements at some corporate offices in California. And Microsoft just launched a new slate of games on Xbox Game Pass, its monthly subscription service. The 11 new titles were announced at the E3 conference. They are mostly from game maker Bethesda, which was acquired by Microsoft this year. Some of the games will be accessible through Xbox, PC, and xCloud. And finally, an unidentified bidder will join Amazon founder Jeff Bezos and his brother on a trip into space next month. That mystery bidder shelled out $28 million for his or her seat on that flight. A fourth passenger will also be on that trip. And those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. So that's what Mike was borrowing money for. Uh huh. <laughs> Mike is first one up there. Mr. Bezos. Congratulations, Mike. That's amazing. Yeah, we look forward to all the stories. It's fun morning because uh, the king of all traffic is back. Yay. Happy Samuel King. Good morning, Samuel. And for Stephen. Good morning. Yeah, and for Stephen. Stephen has a couple of days off. He'll be back later uh, this week. Glad to be back with you guys. Like as I said, the alarm worked somehow, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, not too much going on right now this morning as we head over here to uh, the wall. Some delays again coming out of New Braunfels 
on uh, Schwab Road, 44 miles per hour there on 35. So keep that in mind if you're heading out of there this morning. You know that construction is up there and everything. Uh, but between uh, 410 and New Braunfels, 18 to 19 minutes in each direction. So, so far, so good when it comes to that this morning. And here's a look at TransGuide. This is a WWY at I-10. Uh, things flowing well there. We did have a stalled uh, vehicle there just a moment ago, but it looks like in the time where I was talking to Mike and Mark and Stephanie, it all cleared out. So, uh, so far, so good. So if you're someone who needs to head out early and run some errands before work, this is a good time to do it. I mean, picking up coffee or food. I mean, there's of course. not much else open. It's much needed on a Monday morning. <laughs> hey, Sammy, how's it been going in the evenings? Good, good, different. And, you know, we've had more time to, you know, report and do, sure. do some stories and, and things like that. So, and also, I think I have one today. I just have to... Okay. Ape it. Well, we know so working with Myra is super sweet. What about that Steve Spree? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark, as you know, he took a, you know, he was happy to have me in the evening get me away from you. <laughs> right. He told what? viewers, it's good that we got you away from Austin, both the city and the guy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I loved it. <laughs> I loved you it. But as long as you're okay with that. I'm okay with yeah. it. I'm okay but with it. Anything else you'd like to say in response to Steve? No. No, 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 Tell him hi. He's got to get up early to deal with us, so no. Yeah, that's true. You, know, you said the alarm worked. My question is, did you sleep with one eye open last night? Is it going to go yes, out? Yes, I thought. Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. I said it. I woke up, and I was like, well, then I went, tried, went back to sleep, and then I got up. Yeah. Well, so, glad you're here. Yeah, yes. glad to have yes. you. All right, when you're heading out the uh, the door this morning, and first of all, look at this picture. Wow. That's very, Trader's Village there. Very cool looking. Love that shot. It almost doesn't look real. It's that so one's about to open up. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. Great looking shot. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Nothing going on out there. We're looking off to the uh, east. That's 410 over there, uh, just to the east of the airport. And uh, got our morning low clouds. Didn't make it up to 95 yesterday. 101 Laredo, 103 in Del Rio, but mid-90s throughout much of the area. Just a couple of degrees above the, the normal, the average high temperature. And it's going to be the same situation again today. We are looking at mid-90s and 93 being normal. So that's, you know, pretty much... Pretty much a wash, if you will, as far as temperatures are concerned. But, of course, it is going to feel hotter than that. Even though humidity drops down somewhat in the afternoon, we go through our daily cycle. Uh, we'll still have heat index readings uh, getting up right around 100, uh, low hundreds down to the south, and especially down to the uh, the southwest. Again, we have this, it's kind of an unusual situation. We're not really stuck into a summer weather pattern right now. I know temperatures are like that, but usually we've got a big area of high pressure kind of off to the east of us. This one's off to the west and so that's keeping us in this northwesterly airflow this northerly airflow aloft and what that does takes a little disturbances and likes to throw them on in here which is going to be the case later on this afternoon and this is that rapid update computer model and this one does show some of those showers and thunderstorms out there Valverde uh, Edwards counties later on this afternoon and maybe one or two would try and pop up and then there's also uh, some computer models want to get one or two of these uh, little disturbances coming in here from the uh, north and northeast, which is fewer and further between. But again, one or two uh, showers, maybe a thunderstorm around here tonight. That'll be about it just again because of that northwesterly flow and you can really kind of make it out very well on the national water vapor imagery. Huge, huge trough out there to the west and to the northwest and then out ahead of it. Here's this big ridge of high pressure and what's interesting is temperatures, you know, just what a week, week and a half ago. It was still right around freezing or just down in the 30s up around Cut Bank, Montana. Now they're back up into the uh, about our temperature as of right now. So that high is in place off to the west of us. We get these little disturbances kind of sliding around here and that's why we get the chance for a couple of showers or two. And that's going to remain in place. And then, of course, down to the uh, south and southeast, there's that low, which is the hurricane center is watching right now. But right now, the indications are it would stay well to the east of us and kind of take a, a straight northwardly uh, trajectory. But obviously, we'll just keep watching that as the as time rolls on this week. 88 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and high temperature today. Once again, up to 95, mostly sunny skies. I think basically off to the northwest, you might see one or two of those showers or a thunderstorm uh, going to be few and far between at best. Same thing tomorrow, kind of the same thing on Wednesday and then going in through the rest of the week. It is a consistent forecast and of course Sunday is when notice how I picked Father's Day over the uh, first day of summer. Wonder oh, why. yes, of course. 
Nice little right. bow tie there. Right, summer stolcis. What? It's yeah, more yeah, a, yeah, a dad it's, thing. Yeah, it, yeah. It's just yeah. So. We, and if you're wondering, folks, yeah, we will remain this subtle all week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. 524, about 79 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, we're checking out even more games just announced at this weekend's annual E3 video game convention. 527, a tree of Hollywood's big screen franchises getting new video games. CNN's Rick Damagella reveals which ones in the Hollywood Minute. Gardeners of the Galaxy? What? No, Rocket. So I let Groot fill out the paperwork. After being canceled last year, the annual E3 video game convention kicked off over the weekend as an online event with games based on movies and comics among the surprise announcements. Square Enix, the studio behind Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts, is bringing Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy together for a video game adventure, putting players in the boots of Star-Lord. Captain Jack Sparrow. But I suspect you already knew that. Keep an eye on your rum, mateys, because Captain Jack Sparrow and Davy Jones are joining Sea of Thieves. The 2018 pirate adventure game is getting a free update, bringing Disney's pirate rogues into the Sea of Thieves game world with a new story. A Pirate's Life set sail June 22nd. Microsoft Flight Simulator lands on new Xbox consoles July 27th and will be getting a movie tie-in expansion. Prospective pilots can take off in the planes of Top Gun Maverick as free downloadable content this fall. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. It's now 528. And coming up, the average price for a new car price just hit a new record. Can you guess what it is? We're going to have an answer and the reason for the rise in prices for both new and used cars. We have a winner ahead on GMSA at 6 to look at the uh, top canine contestants and took home best in show. Making headlines this morning, President Biden gets set to meet world leaders uh, to address a variety of issues at the NATO summit. San Antonio police is starting the work week trying to find the person who shot a man at a motel. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are in the upper 70s, so a little humid out there already, and we are expecting another warm day. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is June 14th. We're going to check in with Samuel King in a moment. He's in for Stephen Cavazos for a couple days. But for now, let's go ahead and check in with Mike because those temperatures are just heating up. Yeah, it is. And this is the, you know, the waning days of spring officially normal high temperature. The average is 93. We hit 95 yesterday. We're going to be up in that ballpark again today. Right now, starting off at 78, and that's about five above where you would normally expect it to be. The humidity, dew point temperature, yeah, that's humid, but that's not bad, especially compared to last week when we had that just miserable humidity out there. And it will be dropping down a little bit by later on this afternoon. We'll kind of go through that daily cycle that we go through. Don't have much moisture aloft in the atmosphere, so we will see once we get rid of some of these low morning clouds. We will see some uh, so a lot plenty of sunshine out there. Notice how there's some uh, moisture moving in here from the uh, northwest and then all, from the northeast, pardon me, and then also this flow coming in here from the northwest. And the pattern that we're in right now, there may be some little disturbances that are going to try and get pushed on in here. One or two of those will pop up a shower thunderstorm primarily off to the northwest later on today. It's going to be very few and far between, if at all. Heat index right now feels like 80 here in town, 82 at Stinson. And yeah, we will have a bit of a heat index to deal with later on today. Mold and pigweed grass are all on the low side. And again, throughout the day, 88 at noon, we get rid of these morning clouds, mostly sunny skies, few clouds left over, 95 for a high temperature. It'll feel like right around 100. Expect more of the same throughout the rest of the week. We'll also check out what uh, may or may not be going on in the Gulf of Mexico. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, as Mark mentioned, Samuel King. What's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. We do have a new stalled vehicle here. This is I-10 eastbound at the uh, Fredericksburg Road exit ramp. The view you're seeing here is from I-10 at De Savala as we head over to the wall. We'll give you a closer uh, look at this. Uh, still not too much uh, traffic on the roads, but we do notice this activity if you're getting your day started uh, in this area. I'm just watching to see where this other uh, looks like police vehicle is going to go. Might be they're clearing this out. But anyway, again, the I-10 eastbound at Fredericksburg exit ramp. So watch out for that in the, over the next maybe 15 minutes or so. Looking at the overall map, no other crashes uh, on the board right now. Even our delays that we saw coming out of New Braunfels at the moment 
have uh, sort of calmed down a little bit. Let's take a look at Bandera Road, 12 minutes heading uh, northbound from 410 to 1604, 8 minutes heading southbound, so that's looking fairly good this way, but some delays there at Hebner Road. Now let's take a, take a look at some travel times, 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie, so no real delays on the I-10 main lanes right now. 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels, 26 minutes as well coming in from Bolverde on 281. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio police say there is still a lot they don't know about a late night shooting at a West Side motel. The victim in that shooting had to be taken to the hospital. It happened on West Commerce Street near San Felipe. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters where detectives are trying to come up with some answers. Now, Katrina, do they have anyone in custody? As far as we know, they have not caught up with the shooter yet. It seems, though, that they do have some people who they've been talking to, uh, people who may know more about what happened. Now, so far, police have been able to tell us that the man who was shot is in his late 50s. They found him around 9 o'clock last night at the Paradise Motel in the 4900 block of West Commerce. Officers told us he had been shot in the upper body, but that it was not life-threatening. The man was taken to a hospital for treatment, and police were not able to say exactly what led to the shooting. Now, they did tell us that the shooter left in a car. They say the car came back to the scene at some point later, but that the shooter was no longer in it. So, again, officers trying to find some answers about what happened. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. A busy start to the week for President Joe Biden. Today, he'll take part in his first in-person NATO summit since taking office. And Wednesday, he'll sit down one-on-one -on -one with Russian President Vladimir Putin. CNN's Brick Conway has a look ahead at what we can expect from both meetings. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. September 11th, 2001. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center. September 12th, 2001. NATO invoked Article 5 for the first time in its history. An armed attack against one shall be considered an attack against them all. We believe NATO and Section 5 is a sacred obligation. President Joe Biden is in Brussels today with plans to reaffirm that commitment during the NATO summit, which brings together the leaders of all 30 allied nations. The White House laid out key summit expectations with a focus on issues like NATO itself, its framework, financing and strength of partnerships, cybersecurity and climate change. Military withdrawal from Afghanistan will also be discussed, along with strategy in regard to China and Russia, which will be front and center in Geneva Wednesday, where preps are underway for Biden's meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. We are looking to resolve those actions which we think are inconsistent with international norms. I think he's going to meet a very different president than one who was at the mercy of Putin. If Russia chooses to continue reckless and aggressive actions, we will respond forcefully. Both summits give Biden unique opportunities to strengthen global partnerships and reassert American leadership on the world stage. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. In El Paso, a car rammed into a crowd of spectators at a racetrack last night, injuring nearly two dozen people. It happened at a mud track race event. El Paso's county judge says that a total of 29 people were hurt, including three who suffered very critical injuries. The El Paso County Sheriff's Office says a preliminary investigation shows that one of the vehicles left the mud track for unknown reasons, hitting and breaking through a guardrail. Three other vehicles were also hit as a result of the initial crash. A new FDA memo outlines how an estimated 75 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine were rendered unusable. Inspectors cited crowded manufacturing areas, inadequate quality assurance, and lab controls as problems. In FG February, the FDA rejected an estimated 60 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson single-dose vaccine after a review of a Baltimore manufacturing facility. Then in March, New York Times reported that another 15 million doses were ruined. But last week, the FDA did approve 10 million doses of the single dose vaccine from that facility as being safe to use. Going forward, Johnson & Johnson must continue to share all relevant manufacturing information with federal regulators.
With abortion and guns already on the agenda, the U.S. Supreme Court is considering adding a third blockbuster issue. The court could soon decide whether to ban consideration of race in college admissions. The justices could say in the coming weeks whether they will hear an appeal claiming that Harvard discriminates against Asian American applicants. It's a case that could have nationwide repercussions. The presence of three appointees of former President Donald Trump could prompt the court to take up the case. The case would not be argued until the fall or winter. Right now it's 539, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, you may be paying a little more for your next vehicle while we're seeing an increase in the price for new and used cars. And next, how you can help local city leaders shape San Antonio's budget going forward. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are no longer spoiled with the rain and temperatures. It is humid out there and it will be hot later today. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. 542 city leaders starting to shape the San Antonio budget and they're asking for your input. Max Massey and Sarah Costa spoke with Laura Mays from the city of San Antonio this weekend on Leading SA. The SA Speak Up survey for the city budget is an interesting mechanism to get San Antonio residents feedback on what they want in the budget and if there is a budget shortfall this year because of the pandemic, what San Antonians do not want cut. Here's a little bit about our conversation and the importance of this survey. We are projecting a shortfall and so that's why we asked the question, if there are specific areas of the budget that you don't want to see cut, Tell us what those are, and we have some options in there that um, range from anything from streets to public health, police and fire, libraries, parks, those kinds of services. Um, so we are seeing some improvements in the economy, but again, just like your budget at home, when you have to trim back, the city has to do the exact same thing and look at what those priorities are. So when you speak up, it really does make a big difference. That was just a small clip of our full conversation. If you want to watch it all, you can see the entire thing right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have our Leading SA segment every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We'll see you next weekend. Guys, back to you. Thank you. And time now is 543 and about 78 degrees out there. If you're trying to get your hands on a new or used car, you may have to pay a little bit more in some place, cases quite a bit more. We will tell you more on why next. And welcome back. It's about 546 in your morning consumer headlines. A shortage of new and used cars is helping send price record to record levels and lifting the nation's overall inflation rate. According to J.D. Power, the average new car price hit a record in May at more than $38,000. That's up 12 percent from the same period a year ago when many car dealerships were closed by the pandemic. And now sales are booming. May's seasonally adjusted sales rate for new car sales rose 34 percent compared to a year ago. Demand is also coming at a time when auto plants are closed or running at reduced production because of a computer chip shortage. Let's check on traffic. Samuel King in the house at 547. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie and activity picking up a little bit here. We mentioned this uh, at 530 about what's going on here at the off ramp near uh, Fredericksburg Road here on I-10 Eastbound. You see the police uh, cars and vehicles there. I understand this might uh, actually we thought it was a stalled vehicle, but when you see this, this indicates it's some kind of crash. Uh, so again, this is not on I-10, the main lanes. This is on the off ramp there at the uh, Fredericksburg Road exit. So let's take a look at the maps. It's coming in as a, at University uh, Heights here. So right here and this with the camera view you saw is from days of all. So it's looking back uh, this way. Uh, so just something to uh, keep in mind if you uh, commute in that area, if you need to head out uh, in that exit again, uh, I-10 uh, eastbound coming into downtown. Looking at the uh, rest of the area, things looking uh, mostly quiet at this point. Let's take a look at some travel times to the east right now. 27 minutes coming in from uh, from New Braunfels on I-35 and 28 minutes coming in on I-10. Still have some delays just past uh, Schwab Road and we probably expect those to build here over the next hour or so. So keep that in mind. Once again, just give you another uh, look here at the, the main uh, event, so to speak. This is again uh, the I-10 off ramp at Fredericksburg Road. You can see the emergency vehicles there. Uh, it's traffic starting to build in the main lanes, but this is off the main highway, but we'll continue to keep an eye on it, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Mike Ostrage making his debut and on Golden Pond this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the cattle are so. That's a oh, yeah, I didn't see them in the background. <laughs> I was just waiting for you to talk about the loons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the loons, Norman, the loons. Um, that's been a long time. Remember that? <laughs> it's a really old movie now. Very old. Yeah.
<laughs> that was kind of the, uh, wasn't it when Jane Fonda and Henry Fonda were trying to make amends or something like that? Correct. In a movie together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, uh, beautiful picture as we kind of go off on a tangent there about Hollywood. All right. Uh, actually, we're seeing a little bit of some uh, breaks in the clouds up here looking off to the east right now and should be a you know decent sunrise a few of these morning clouds hanging around here heat index right now 82 stinson 80 at the airport the temperature is just a couple of degrees lower than that so not uh you know it's not like it just hits you in the face when you walk outside as far as humidity is concerned and then current heat index at about 20 in some cases 25 degrees to that and that's what it will feel like with the heat index later on today so we're going to be up right around 100 here in town. We will see somewhat of a drop in temperatures, uh, or excuse me, in dew point temperatures, but with temperatures so high up in the mid 90s, it doesn't take much humidity to then add to that. So shade, lots of water, and don't forget the sunscreen. All right, here's what's going on. We've got this northerly flow in the atmosphere, and so that's why we're going to be seeing maybe a couple of those showers or a few thunderstorms off to the uh, northwest later on today. Few and far between at best. And then tomorrow, now this uh, model wants to get a few more coming in here from the northeast because, again, we've got this flow coming in here out of the north. So, And again, this is that broad brush sort of a computer model. You know, one or two of them out there, that's going to be the situation. Maybe on Wednesday as well. All right, let's shift over a little bit further to the east and throughout the next couple of days, some uh, showers along the coast are possible. And here's that system which is trying to brew down there in the uh, Bay of Campeche. And this computer model does have it being a big rain producer, but as you can see, everything pretty much is going to be staying well off to the east of us. Obviously, if you wrap around showers heading in there toward the, uh, say, Houston area, but again, the majority of this would be staying well off to the east. So this whole thing, now, at least according to this particular computer model, is going to be taking more of a northward movement, north to northeastward, over the course of the weekend. High pressure, that's the dominant feature for us, and it's this wrap around, and you see these little kind of waves there in the upper level wind lines. That's what's bringing in these disturbances, and that's why we may see a couple of uh, showers, maybe a thunderstorm over the next uh, couple of days. And pretty much that thing's going to be staying in place for the next couple of days, which is an unusual position for it in the summertime. Later on in the summer, that thing's going to be off to the east of us a little bit more, and that's when you really get into the uh, kind of doldrums of summer around here. So today, 88 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies, and one or two showers going to try and pop up around here. 95 for a high temperature. Most will be well off to the northwest later on today. One or two trying to scooch into the uh, the hill country. Same thing tomorrow. Same thing on Wednesday. Temperatures will stay actually pretty close to seasonable normals right around uh, low mid 90s low mid 70s and then going in toward the weekend a few clouds around here summer officially begins later on sunday evening but father's day begins at the stroke of midnight <laughs> <laughs> and will last a beautiful 24 hours. Or if you just want to start celebrating right now, I'm sure all the dads out there would appreciate that and welcome it. Okay, noted <laughs> for the here, whole week. Here, here, Mike Ostrich. <laughs> you go with your bad self. Hopefully, right. hopefully my kids are listening. No, they're asleep right now. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll text them later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Conference call time. Yes. 552, about 78 degrees. A new pandemic era record set after the box office over the weekend. We're going to Run down the top five movies in your weekend box office report next. First, though, your pick three numbers 313 Fireball 4, Daily 4, 4, 5, 4, 1, Fireball 5. Cash 5, 11, 17, 23, 29, 33, and Lotto Texas 5, 14, 27, 36, 49, 50. Your Powerball numbers 8, 25, 34, 38, 41, Powerball 10, Power Play 3. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we have so much to get to, but we will go ahead and start with the latest stop on President Biden's big first overseas trip. New details about his high stakes summit ahead of that one on one with Russian President Putin. We are live in Brussels this morning and I'll be bringing you the extreme heat danger and drought, plus the connection to climate change right here from Salt Lake City. That and so much more on GMA. Cruella. Oh. Mm. Cruella fell from third to fifth place this weekend with $6.7 million. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It dropped from first place all the way to fourth with just over $10 million. It's really the rabbit story. I just wrote it down. Look, Dad, it's 
Peter Rabbit. Uh, I hate that I'm the face of this. He's a little naughty. What? Peter Rabbit 2 The Runaway has been hopping all over the release calendar for more than a year. The bunny bounced to a third place debut with $10.4 million. <laughs> Arriving just short of a year after its intended release, Lin-Manuel Miranda's In the Heights bowed in second place on ticket sales of $11.4 million. A Quiet Place Part 2 rebounded back into first place after slipping to second, earning $11.6 million. That brings its three-week domestic box office total to $108.9 million, making it the first movie to break the $100 million mark since the pandemic began. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, rumors continue to arise about Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond and her coaching future. We'll tell you the team she could be coaching next season. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help solving a robbery. We'll have a closer look at these images and you could receive a cash reward if you have any information. Also ahead, a woman is dead, a man still missing this morning after they tried to save two children drowning in the Guadalupe River near Seguin. Sarah Costa staying on top of this story and we'll have a live report. And Samuel is back with a look at these flashing lights out there at 10 at Days of Olive. That and Mike's forecast as we keep an eye on the southern Gulf of Mexico. We'll be right back. Two children were saved by a man and a woman who almost drowned in the Guadalupe River yesterday. Now, authorities are searching for that man who disappeared under the water. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA, the latest on this search. More and more snakes slithering through San Antonio. We'll tell you why. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. What a beautiful shot there. Uh, a little humid out there as well. So we will just deal with that during the month of June. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, rise and shine. It is Monday. It is June 14th, officially the last week of spring. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us. And also, it is almost Father's Day, right. as Mike will Thank be reminding us. Yay. Yes, <laughs> yes. we're, we're going to be harping, not harping. Harping's not the right word. No, reminding. reminding. Yes, <laughs> gently. Yes. It's a little nudge. <laughs> Every single day. Gentle reminders. Yes. So are you hoping for anything particular this year? Or you just want the overall support of your family and, and their love? All of the above? Yeah. 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 All of the above. Okay. So. All right. Yes, and they do. and yeah. a new remote control airplane. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work too. I know. A little bit the helicopter thing. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, I could get a whole lot. Never mind. Um, yeah, beautiful start this morning. And we do have a lot of humidity out there, though. So uh, heat index right now is at 79. It's not uh, as uh, oppressively humid as what it was last week. So this uh, heat index is not that much above the actual air temperature, but obviously enough. And mold, pigweed, grass are all on the uh, low side this morning and throughout the rest of the day temperatures will be uh, basically steady at this point and then we'll have some clouds hanging around here might see a few more forming up and we'll be right around the upper 80s at noon and then top off mid 90s same thing as yesterday there may be a couple of showers and a couple of thunderstorms trying to pop up especially well off to the northwest later on this afternoon out there around say Valverde uh, Edwards County one or two there's the chance they, they're going to try and sneak into portions of the hill country, but the rain chances are very few and far between. It's just because we, the, the pattern that we're in right now. So, you know, at least one or two showers out there. I really wouldn't count on too much of anything, though. One thing you can count on, though, is the fact that temperatures are going to be staying fairly consistent all week long as we send out, ring out to spring and, and get summer coming in here by this weekend on Sunday, which is, Stephanie? Father's Day again. Details on that coming up. Not Father's Day, but the forecast in just a couple of moments. <laughs> Traffic Authority. Samuel King is here this morning filling in. How you doing, sir? What's going on? Oh, good morning, Mike. Still watching the situation. I-10. This is the view from uh, Days of Olive, but a little bit uh, closer to that Fredericksburg uh, off-ramp here. Uh, not as many emergency vehicles as we had about 15 minutes ago, but still something to watch out for. And you notice traffic there on I-10. Uh, starting to build as well. Just take a look here in the map. Again, that is on the off-ramp, so not really affecting 
uh, the main uh, traffic there. Uh, saying good morning to the folks uh, in New Braunfels. Had some delays south of New Braunfels. Now we're seeing some here as you approach State Highway 46 heading northbound on 35 down to 17 miles per hour. But coming into town from New Braunfels, 26 minutes into downtown, uh, 27 minutes on 281 from Bolverde, 24 minutes again on I-10. And this is again I-10 at Days of Allah. I want to show you this too if you're heading on 90 at 36, there is a stalled vehicle there or some sort of uh, spin out there. So watch out for that this morning as well. We'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie? Samuel, thank you very much. New this morning, soon the search will continue for a man who saved two children from drowning in the Guadalupe River. That man and a woman jumped in after them. However, the woman did not survive. Sarah Costa has been following this story all morning long here on GMSA. Joins us live at the Guadalupe River near FM 1117. That's out near Seguin. Sarah, is the man related to the two kiddos he tried to save? Yes, Mark, he is the father of those two children who he was able to save. And this is the area where those two children were pulled to safety by is by their father and that woman who jumped in to help them. And this is also the area where that man and woman were last seen after they disappeared under the water. But here's what we know so far this morning. The father was at the river with his three children in this area near the bridge at FM 1117. Two of his children got caught up in the river's current. He jumped in after them. That's when 22 year old Cassandra Kendrick was with another group nearby and decided to jump in and help the man. The father of the children was able to reach both of them. He handed them off to Kendrick, who was able to successfully hand them off to another person who was able to get the children to safety. Then the sheriff's office says the man began to struggle under the water. The woman then went after him. A group of people near the water say they saw both the man and the 22-year-old woman go under the water and never resurface, and that was around 5 o'clock yesterday. A search then began for the two of them with the help of several surrounding authorities walking up and down the river, hoping the two of them were able to get to safety. Around 845 last night, the Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office says Cassandra Kendrick's body was found by divers and she was pronounced dead on the scene. Now the identity of the father of those children has not been released at this time. The search for the father halted around 10 o'clock last night and authorities say they'll begin their search again this morning. Once the sun comes up and we will keep you updated on air and online as we get those updates. Live from Guadalupe County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a suspect who robbed a Wells Fargo bank on the city's northwest side. This happened last Thursday around 4 p.m. in the 3000 block of West Woodlawn Avenue. That's where police say a man walked into the bank, put a note on the plexiglass in front of a teller that said he had a bomb. He demanded money and that suspect then took off with the cash and ran away. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward for information. New this morning, a scare scene out in West Texas. A car rams into a crowd of spectators at a racetrack, injuring nearly two dozen people. It happened around 6.30 last night at a mud track race event in the town of Fabens. That's southwest of El Paso. A county judge says a total of 29 people were hurt, including three who suffered critical injuries. The El Paso County Sheriff's Office says one of the vehicles left the mud track for unknown reasons, hitting and breaking through a guardrail. Three other vehicles were also hit in that incident. The U.S. is getting closer to the Biden administration's goal to vaccinate 70 percent of adults with at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine by July 4th. So far, the CDC is reporting 64 percent of American adults have received at least one dose of vaccine and more than 309 million doses have been administered. More than 143 million people are fully vaccinated now, which amounts to about 54 percent of U.S. adults. The CDC reports 1.2 million doses have been reported since Saturday for a seven day average of a little over a million doses a day. Other headlines this morning, President Biden making his entrance at the NATO summit today. The president began his day meeting with the leaders of Baltic states regarding the threat posed by Russia, China and the recent air piracy incident in Belarus. Later this week, the president meets with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Geneva. 
This week on What's Up South Texas, the San Antonio police officer has dedicated his life to bridging the gap between law enforcement and the community. This is in honor of his fallen partner. Officer Julio Cavazos was nearly killed while he and his partner Miguel Moreno were investigating vehicle burglaries on July 29th of 2017. Miguel was shot and killed, but Cavazos promised to keep his memory alive through building a stronger relationship between police and the younger community. He has been heavily involved with the PAL program and the Police Athletic League, where he helps kids in sports like boxing, baseball, CrossFit, and even esports. He says it is a way to keep children out of trouble. I don't want people to forget him through, like, through this, um, through teaching people that we are your police officers, We're, we are where you come from. Both Julio and Miguel grew up on the west side. Now Julio hopes to grow the PAL program so more children from all sides of town can participate. If you'd like to donate funds or equipment, you can find out how on our website at kset.com. You can also learn more about Cavazos story and others featured on What's Up South Texas. Right now it's uh, nine minutes past the hour, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, San Antonio Mission is coming off a big win as they get ready for their next series. We have a preview coming up. We're still ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you why you might be seeing some snakes in the yard and how you can shoo them away. <laughs> Scary. I just run the other way. Run the other way. That's, That's what I do. probably the best advice <laughs> I heard all day. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam, we're at about 78 degrees. Nice and humid out there. We'll be right back. Welcome back 613 Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond will interview for two vacant head coaching jobs in the NBA, the Portland Trailblazers and the Orlando Magic. That's according to the website The Athletic. Portland fired their head coach Terry Stotts after nine years after they were ousted in first round by Denver. And the Magic said goodbye to Steve Clifford after just three years by missing the playoffs. Becky became the first female assistant coach in all four major sports in North America when she was named a Spurs assistant in 2014. After a 16-year professional career in the WNBA, where she was six-time All-Star, she was also the Spurs head coach in Summer League play in 2015, leading the Spurs to the Summer League title. She also became the first acting, acting head coach in NBA when she replaced Greg Popovich for one game after Pop was ejected from the Lakers game back in December of 2020. Now she waits to see if she can make history again. From basketball to baseball, now to the missions. Everything slowly returning to normal last week. And we got to see a pretty full Nelson Wolf Stadium here in San Antonio. Take a look at this video from a tweet sent by the missions on Tuesday. Pretty awesome to see fans come out there and support the missions. It's been far too long without seeing the Wolf Pack like this. Check us out Friday night. A woman catches a foul ball with a plastic storage bin full of cotton candy. Great grab. And then she does even better by walking over and giving the ball to a kid in the stands. Missions didn't do so bad either. The Midland Rockhounds were in attack mode and during the first inning pulled out to a 2-0 lead, but in the second, San Antonio responded a big way, scoring five runs on six hits. Missions would go on to win, but a final of 12 to six. Sweet Missions stay at the Wolf for another home series. This time they welcome the Northwest Arkansas Naturals to town. The series runs tomorrow through Sunday. For more sports highlights and headlines, head to our website at ksat.com and search for Instant Replay. And as you know, we had a ton of rain during the month of May, and now we're seeing more snakes slithering around. Now, this doesn't mean the number of snakes has increased. We're just seeing them come out from hiding. This means they will be more active during the day and at night. So what if you see a snake in your yard? Director of Animal Care Ectotherms at the San Antonio Zoo, Craig Pelkey, says the best thing to do is to give them some space and leave them alone. Stay calm. When we're not calm and we're getting all riled up, we, we tend not to think so well. And uh, one of the best things to do is stay calm, give them space, identify what it is, and uh, you're going to be fine. Pelkey says if you want to avoid snakes, first thing you should do is take a look at your yard. So get rid of excess leaves and debris, 
high grass and trim up your shrubs. If you eliminate that, snakes most likely won't want to hang around. Ahead on GMSA at 9, we have some tips on how to identify venomous snakes and what you should do if you get bit by one. Right now, 616s, and I saw some flashing lights on Highway 90 near 36th Street. Here's Samuel King with more. Hey, Mark and Stephanie, look like there's some sort of a stalled vehicle. Maybe a vehicle had uh, spun out there, but looks like the tow truck is on the scene. We're still seeing those emergency uh, vehicles here. Uh, that truck just arriving here in a fast uh, 15 minutes or so just to uh, retrieve that vehicle, but you can still see the lights uh, there on, on this ramp here. This is, again, 90th at 36. Take a look at that on the map. Not really affecting things on Highway 90 uh, too much uh, this morning. Traffic times look fairly good uh, on that highway. Looking throughout the rest of the region, a lot of green on the map right now. That's what we like to see this time of morning, so that's just something to uh, keep in mind, this is a, maybe a good time to head out uh, depending uh, on where you are going uh, in the area. Again, this is at 90th at 36. Wanted to take one more check here at uh, De Zavala here. This uh, situation, that's 10 at Vance Jackson. I'm flipping it in. There we are. And we were talking about this uh, crash here a little bit earlier, but looks like things are improving here on the exit ramp there near uh, Fredericksburg Road. So uh, things getting better at the moment, but we know it doesn't uh, take much for things to get really going here, guys. As uh, Mike Osterhage daydreams about Father's Day gifts, what else do you have for us this morning, sir? <laughs> oh, the list. Oh. Oh, I'm back. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you would like the list, uh, just text me and then, you know, it's not kidding. Oh. Uh, right. It's a nice start this morning. We do have uh, temperatures, though, which are a little bit on the warm side. Everybody's in the kind of mid upper 70s. Uh, few low or few upper 60s out there in portions of the hill country right now. And uh, we're going to be uh, well, on the humid side, obviously. So we have a little bit of a heat index to do with kind of our usual summer kind of humidity starting off and uh, maybe one or two thunderstorms off to the primarily northwest later on today. The way the atmosphere is kind of set up and we've got this flow coming in here out of the north and so that's why we'll see these little disturbances move on through here and uh Overall, the rest of the week, basically sunny and hot. Now, there are a couple of things we're going to have to try and keep an eye on. Hey, speaking of Father's Day, this is a great dad line. Ready? Okay. We're ready. How do you organize a party in space? How, Mike? You plan it. Uh -huh, that's cute. <laughs> Half of that was the delivery, and you sold it. Thank you very much. I love that picture, though. I saw this uh, Saturday night. We were uh, outside, and just that nice little sliver of the, uh, the crescent moon out there. So. You're out celebrating your anniversary, by the way. Happy anniversary to you and Bonnie. Anniversary. Thank you very much. I have a picture coming up next half hour. Okay. Of course I do. Okay. Of course you do. Anyway, you're, yeah. you're no dummy. <laughs> Not as dumb as I look. Yes, thank you very much. All right, we do have a nice start this morning and uh, dew point temperatures. We are right around 70, upper 60s, so that's not bad. Uh, obviously, a lot more humidity there in Castroville, but this is better than what it was at this time last week. Remember, and we couldn't get rid of it in the afternoon. It was just ridiculous in the afternoon, and we will see the, the cycle that we go through throughout the afternoon hour, so dew point temperatures will come down a little bit. It, then come up overnight tomorrow morning and do the same thing in the afternoon, come down somewhat. So we will have a little bit more, a little more tolerable, especially if you're not in the direct sun. But again, we will still have a heat index getting up close to 100. So with a high temperature 95, it doesn't take much to get us up into the 100 or low hundreds. Now we've got this, as I mentioned, northerly flow in the atmosphere and computer models do have a couple of uh, showers, thunderstorms trying to pop up around the area. One or two may work their way further east into the hill country. This model also wants to get one or two of them coming around that flow to the northeast, which is possible, although not very likely. And uh, tomorrow we'll have about the same situation around here. And after some sunshine today, obviously we're going to be seeing some clouds kind of come back into the picture then overnight. So down to the uh, south and southeast of us, the Hurricane Center has been watching that area of circulation down there in the Bay of Campeche. And there is about a 30-40% chance in the long term in the next five days that it would develop into a, a tropical system. However, right now, the path that a lot of models have this, if it does indeed develop, is to move almost straight up to the north. Could get a couple of wraparound showers along the coast uh, over toward Houston, but as far as things look right now, nothing as far as we are concerned from that, if indeed it does develop. 88 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature then today, getting up to 95, mostly sunny skies. 
one or two showers, thunderstorms, primarily off to the northwest, and they're again going to be few and far between at best. And then we go into tomorrow, about the same situation, same thing on Wednesday. Again, just because we're in that northerly flow, one or two of those showers, thunderstorms out there, and the rest of the week, it consistent, very about normal temperatures, maybe a degree or two above that. And uh, summer does begin later on Sunday evening, but prior to celebrating that, we will celebrate Father's Day. Wow, thank you for mentioning that. I'm, I'm on it <laughs> all week long. We're with you. We're yes. with you, Mike Oster. Yes, we are. Yes. Thank and you. We'll talk more about your anniversary coming up. Yeah. 621, about 78 degrees on your Monday. And still ahead on GMSA, Microsoft launching a full list of new games for its Xbox console. We're going to have this and more after the break. My cholesterol is borderline. I figure I can worry about it or do something about it. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's odor and taste free with guaranteed potency. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with garlic. Age before beauty? Why not both? Visibly diminish wrinkled skin in just two days. Crate Corrector Lotion, only from Gold Bond. Champion your skin. It's very common to have both sensitivity and gum issues. Dentists and hygienists will want to recommend Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gum. You get the sensitivity relief as well as improved gum health, all in one. Just two pills for all day pain relief. A leave it and see what's possible. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on that scare in the air. Watch as passengers and crew members on this Delta flight hold down an unruly passenger after authorities say he threatened to take down the plane. He uh, clearly had some sort of breakdown. The pilot making an urgent announcement. He very forcefully said, uh, I need all able-bodied men to come to the front of the plane immediately for an emergency. Very quickly, half the plane was up and in the aisle and <laughs> headed toward the front. The passenger quickly restrained. The plane making an emergency landing in Oklahoma City, where it was swept by police. As air travel increases, the FAA is seeing a spike in passengers misbehaving. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what the FAA is doing to hold unruly passengers accountable. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Microsoft is launching a new slate of games on Xbox Game Pass, its monthly subscription service. The 11 new titles were announced at the E3 conference. Some of the games will be accessible through Xbox, PC, and xCloud. Right now it's 626, about 78 degrees. And a woman is dead and man still missing after the two helped save two kids from drowning in the Guadalupe River. Our Sarah Costa is standing by live with what we know. Now let's check Trans Guide right now. 90 at 636th Street rather. The sun is coming up. A few headlights still on out there. Samuel King is back with a look at the roads and Mike's got your work week forecast. The search continues this morning for a man at the Guadalupe River near Seguin after he and a woman jumped in the river to save two children from drowning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta in just a bit where authorities say they were both last seen. The search for a suspect and some answers continues after a shooting at a Westside Motel. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. And summertime is here, well, at least the temperatures, and you're looking for ways to keep your kids active while following social distance guidelines. We're going to have some ideas. Outside with live cam, pretty day out there right now, beginning on your super early Monday morning. Last week of spring, summer officially begins late this weekend. Welcome back, everybody. It's Monday, June 14th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. And although it is not officially summer, it definitely feels like summer especially, did this weekend, yeah, especially in the afternoon. Mike is here with more on that. Good morning. Yeah, summer officially. Good morning uh, begins Sunday, late Sunday evening coming up here. And uh, well, meteorologically, this is summer, as we say. But um, yeah, on the calendar, it doesn't begin for another couple of days. Sure, like Stephanie said, sure does feel like it out there. Nice start this morning, though. We've got uh, some clear sky out there right now. Just a few clouds hanging around 77 degrees and that number is not bad. A dew point of 69. Of course, you'd like it to be 
obviously lower than that, but it's better than what it was last week. And uh, we do have a slight bit of a heat index, just a couple of degrees above the actual air temperature. Everything's on the low side as far as mold, pigweed and grass, and we will have warm, humid conditions this morning. We are on the above normal side by about uh, four or five degrees, and then later on this afternoon will be about normal, about the same thing as yesterday, 95 normal average temperatures, 93 degrees, and there will be one or two thunderstorms trying to pop up, especially off to the northwest. We're into this uh, kind of northerly airflow and it takes these little disturbances and you get one or two of those popping up. So maybe northwest in the hill country, one or two of those. About the same situation tomorrow and then the rest of the week, sunny and hot. Now there is a little bit of something trying to brew down there in the Bay of Campeche and the Hurricane Center is watching that. We'll give you the latest on that and would it have any impact on our weather? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, anything big going on, sir? Good morning, uh, Mike. Things are relatively uh, calm for the moment as we uh, look at the map of the San Antonio region. We'll give you a couple looks at some spots. Always watch this on the east side. Loop 410 at uh, I-10 East. Uh, things looking fine at the moment. Not too many delays. Going up to uh, New Braunfels. Good morning, new folks up there. Uh, 17 miles per hour still. Some delays here. 35 northbound approaching State Highway 46. So watch out for that this morning. Coming in from New Braunfels into downtown San Antonio, however, 26 minutes right now. Uh, so that looks fairly good. 22 minutes coming in on 281 from Bolverde. 28 minutes coming in from the Pleasanton area on 37. Heading to the northwest side now. Had some construction overnight at 1604 at Hausman, but things are flowing well this morning. We'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. The search continues for a man who disappeared in the Guadalupe River. He and a woman jumped in the water yesterday afternoon to save two children from drowning. The Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office says they found the 22 year old woman who jumped in last night. Sadly, she did not survive. Sarah Costa is live near Seguin off of FM 1117 with the latest from the Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office. Now, Sarah, we understand the two children were saved. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Yes, fortunately, those two children were pulled to safety by that man and woman who jumped into the Guadalupe River after those children got caught up in the current. This happened around 5 o'clock yesterday, but here's what we know so far at this time. That man was at the river with his three children in this area near the bridge at FM 1117 near Seguin. Two of his children got caught up in the river's current. He jumped in after them. 22-year-old Cassandra Kendrick was with another group nearby and decided to jump in and help the man. The father of the children was able to reach both of his children. He handed them off to Kendrick, who was able to hand them off to another person who was able to get the children to safety. Then the sheriff's office says the man began to struggle under the water, and then the woman went after, the, after him. A group of people near the water say they saw both the man and the 22-year-old woman go under the water, and they never resurfaced. This is all happening around 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon. A search then began for the two of them with the help of several surrounding authorities walking up and down the river stream, hoping the two were able to get to safety. Then around 845 last night, the Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office says Cassandra Kendrick's body was found by divers and she was pronounced dead on the scene at 10 p.m. last night. First responders halted the search for the man and it will continue when the sun comes up this morning. Authorities did not release the identity of that father and they said the search will continue again, hopefully in just an hour or two this morning. Live from Guadalupe County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. San Antonio police have found a victim, but not a lot of information about why he was shot. They say it happened at a motel on the west side near West Commerce and San Felipe. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters where the investigation continues. Now, Katrina, we understand that police believe he should recover. some sort of technical difficulties. We'll try to get Katrina back uh, coming up here before the top of the hour. Moving on this morning, an investigation underway after a driver hit a San Antonio police car last night. Happened at Wurzbach and Whisper Valley around 315. Police tell us an officer was helping the driver of a stalled vehicle, and that's when another driver squeezed through, sideswiped the officer's car, and took off. No one was hurt. And one man is in the hospital following a crash last night. It happened just before 10 on the city's northeast side in the 14,400 block of Bulverde Road near Briarcrest. That's where San Antonio police say the man crashed his motorcycle. 
Officers say he was unresponsive when they arrived on the scene. No word on his current condition or what caused him to crash. San Antonio police need your help finding two suspects. They say robbed a 7-Eleven on the north side. Take a look. Officers say it happened back on May 25th at the store on West Avenue and West Silver Sands. They say just before 3 in the morning, the men walked in, grabbed several items, and walked out without paying. When the clerk confronted them, one of the suspects threatened the clerk with a weapon. They took off in this blue pickup truck. If you have any information, it could lead to an arrest. Uh, Call Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for a cash reward. To the latest on a story we're following closely, Austin police are working with the DPS, the FBI and ATF to find a second suspect following the mass shooting on 6th Street. Austin police say one of the 14 victims in the shooting died from his injuries yesterday. 25 year old Douglas John Cantor, a tourist from New York, died in the hospital around noon. A juvenile suspect was arrested in that shooting and at last check that person has not yet been charged. As we mentioned, police are searching for a second male suspect. Investigators think the shooting started after an argument, but right now it's not clear if both suspects fired guns in that incident. 637 city leaders starting to shape the San Antonio budget and they're asking for the public's input. Max Massey and Sarah Costa spoke with Laura Mays from the city of San Antonio this weekend on Leading SA. The SA Speak Up survey for the city budget is an interesting mechanism to get San Antonio residents feedback on what they want in the budget and if there is a budget shortfall this year because of the pandemic, what San Antonians do not want cut. Here's a little bit about our conversation and the importance of this survey. We are projecting a shortfall and so that's why we asked the question, if there are specific areas of the budget that you don't want to see cut, Tell us what those are, and we have some options in there that um, range from anything from streets to public health, police and fire, libraries, parks, those kinds of services. Um, so we are seeing some improvements in the economy, but again, just like your budget at home, when you have to trim back, the city has to do the exact same thing and look at what those priorities are. So when you speak up, it really does make a big difference. That was just a small clip of our full conversation. If you want to watch it all, you can see the entire thing right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have our Leading SA segment every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We'll see you next weekend. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Max. Today is World Blood Donor Day. It's dedicated to raising awareness about giving blood and thank donors for their life-saving gifts. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says today also carries a deeper meaning as our local need for blood is currently outpacing donations. One of the locations where you can donate today is at Brennan High School. That's on the city's far west side in the 2400 block of Cottonwood Drive, just outside of 1604. Donations will be accepted today from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. To schedule an appointment, you can call 210-731-5590 or you can head to SouthTexasBlood.org. Right now it's just about 6, uh, what's well, exactly 639, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, some creative ways to keep your kids active and safe this summer. Faces of Fiesta is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, my name is Calista Burns and I'm Miss Fiesta San Antonio Viva Fiesta. This year's Miss Fiesta is a native to San Antonio who grew up on the southeast side of the city. I went to Incarnate Word High School all four years and I am now attending the University of the Incarnate Word. I'm an education major with a double minor in math and reading. One thing that's important to her is mentoring young girls to enter the STEM programs. My community service project as Miss Fiesta is called GEMS, which stands for Girls in Engineering, Math, and Science. We are a summer program that promotes and empowers girls to be involved in the fields of STEM. She's proud and excited to represent the Fiesta Commission because Fiesta, well, it isn't just a party. It's a party with a purpose. I love that Fiesta is a party with a purpose because yes, we do go out and celebrate and have fun, but behind all that is a great big purpose of getting our community involved and working together and her favorite fiesta event, the Battle of Flowers Parade, because it just gathers the entire community. It's so festive and so bright. And welcome back. It's about 6.43. Coronavirus cases across the U.S. may be dwindling, but the pandemic certainly isn't over, and social distancing guidelines are still in effect. And with your kids out of school for some vacation, staying inside may be more difficult than ever. So what are some ways to stay safe and active? 
One idea to start a garden. Gardening is a great way to enjoy the fresh air and summer sun while letting your kids get their hands dirty. It's an activity that also teaches younger children about where their food comes from. Plus, the garden will be there long after the pandemic is over. Another option for indoor fun, build an obstacle course, set up kitchen chairs, couch cushions, blankets, you know, old school, anything you have on hand to make your obstacle course as simplistic or as challenging as you like. It's sure to let your kids burn off some energy. Best part, you can build a new obstacle course every week. And a scavenger hunt, a tried a true form of entertainment. It gives kids a chance to brainstorm clues on their own while also developing problem solving skills and activity that doesn't require a lot of parent guidance. Set the kids on the hunt and you might even be able to enjoy a few minutes of quiet time. Well, we have a winner of the 145th annual Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show, and I stayed up late last night watching most of this. Aww. So it's a Pekingese pup named Wasabi who won Best in Show last night. He is now the fifth ever toy breed dog to win the title. And get this, it isn't even Wasabi's first win. He won the American Kennel National Championship in 2019, and winning might be in his blood. So Wasabi's grandfather, Malaki, won the Westminster title back in 2012. Wasabi's owner says he was pretty nonchalant about winning the title, but to celebrate his win, Wasabi got a special treat, a little filet mignon. Look for all the Westminster Kennel Club highlights coming up on Good Morning America beginning at 7 o'clock. I was watching the working dog breeds last night, and it was interesting. There were two new breeds at the Kennel Club show huh. last and night, and one of them was a dog and a handler from Lavernia. Oh. Right here in the San Antonio area. I don't remember the name of the dog. It was a beautiful dog, but it was just really interesting looking. Oh, all right. So I'm going to have to do some more research. Yeah. Uh, but Something close to I home. saw Lavernia right there on the yeah. screen. Yeah. Well, way to represent Lavernia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King to see how things are going outside with traffic. And I guess we there's a case out of Congress, a story about a, a colleague from Bernie actually competing. Oh, really? As okay. Well, well there's two. Best in variety. So a lot of local representation at the uh, Westminster Dog Show. But uh, so that's good. And traffic looks good uh, right now as well as we head over here uh, to the wall. Looking at uh, northwest side, some delays starting on 1604. But otherwise, uh, things are looking fine, even if you're coming in uh, from Bernie, let's say on I-10 here. And I-10 at Ralph Fair uh, looking uh, fine uh, this morning. So pretty good there, Mike. And hopefully the day is going to be the rest of the day is going to be good as it's starting. Uh, not too bad throughout the rest of the day. But before we get to the weather, I have to say happy anniversary to my beautiful wife 24 years ago, back when I used to have dark hair. You, you haven't changed a bit, Mike. Yeah, you look, you look the same. She has changed a bit. So, Aww, and uh, beautiful. That's Bonnie's best friend, Christy over there, and my big brother, Jeff. So how many years, Mike? 24. Congratulations. Congrats. Beautiful picture there. Thank you very much. Happy anniversary, dear. Love you. Aww. And we're starting off very nice, nice sunrise peeking over there. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around as of right now. Uh, the reason why we have the chance for a couple of uh, showers, thunderstorms, we've got this northerly flow. You can sort of see a bit of a clockwise rotation off to the west of us, and that's the high over there. And so it keeps us in this northerly flow. And a lot of times you get these little disturbances just to be kind of pushed on in here. And so that's why we'll see one or two of them out there. And um, it's not going to be there's not going to be a lot, maybe out in portions of the uh, the hill country and perhaps um, off to the, the northeast. Now, down to the southeast of us, right here around the Bay of Campeche, there is a uh, short term, not a great chance, longer term in the next three to five days, about a 40% chance that that may develop into a, a tropical system down there. Now, here's the long range computer model. First of all, notice how this one, like Short term model does have a couple of those showers popping up out there, uh, maybe Valverde County, uh, Edwards County, perhaps one or two trying to straggle into portions of the hill country. And this one also has one or two up to the northeast and then um, they'll be kind of falling apart. Perhaps the same thing tomorrow. Then as we go on into time and uh, as this model picks up on that low developing there in the Gulf of Mexico, notice how it takes it pretty much straight up to the north. And it's overall going to be avoiding us as it looks right now. Uh, no real direct or really even indirect impacts from that. There could be a couple of uh, just sea breeze showers along the coast, but that would be about it. So as like I said, as of right now, uh, everything, a lot of computer models are just tracking that thing well off to the north. 88 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today up to 95, mostly sunny skies, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Again, I think primarily off to the northwest 
if there was one trying to pop up uh, far off to the northeast, yeah, but again, these are going to be very few and far between at best around here. Then we go into the next few days and roughly the same situation tomorrow, Wednesday. Of course, don't forget today is flag day. Flag, mm -hmm. flag proudly. And then uh, temperatures, everything's going to be really, really consistent. Right around normal, degree or two above that. Same thing with low temperatures. Humidity will drop down somewhat in the afternoon. And, of course, this weekend looks to be pretty hot, pretty sunny. Summer officially begins late Sunday. But earlier, it is Father's Day. And, and she's right. good. <laughs> she's very good. I found the breed. It's called a Dogo Argentino. It's a big game hunter, guardian breed from Argentina. Massive head with cropped or natural ears, smooth white coat. Almost looks like, and don't get me wrong here, it, it looks... Like it's in the pit bull family, but maybe uh, a little bit oh, bigger. Yeah. yeah, so I wish I could show the picture to everybody, but oh, it it's, look like it, it's, yes. it's a pretty, pretty dog. But uh, oh. it competed last night again in Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. First Very time good. as a recognized breed. You're right, that does look like it would yes. be related to the mm -hmm. American sweet, Bull Terrier. Sweet, sweet, sweet dog. Look, uh, beautiful coat, too. About 10 till right now, 78 degrees. And now that more people are vacationing, travel insurance is becoming a popular thing to get. Tomorrow on GMSA, what you need to know about the fine print before you spend your money. Outside with Live Cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up. The search continues this morning for a man who disappeared in the Guadalupe River yesterday after he and a woman jumped into the water to save two children from drowning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. That man was at the river with his three children in this area near the bridge at FM 1117 near Seguin. Two of his children got caught up in the river's current. He jumped in after them. 22-year-old Cassandra Kendrick was with another group nearby and decided to jump in and help the man. The father of the children was able to reach both of them. He handed them off to the Kendrick, who was able to successfully hand them off to another person who was able to get the children to safety. Then the sheriff's office says the man began to struggle under the water, and then the woman went after him. They both then disappeared underwater. The Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office says a dive team then found the 22-year-old woman. She was pronounced dead on scene. The search will continue this morning for that man. From Guadalupe County, I'm Sarah Acosta. KSAT 12 News. The day is starting with unanswered questions for San Antonio police. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They are trying to find out who shot a man and why. The police got a call around 9 o'clock last night to the Paradise Motel in the 4900 block of West Commerce. That's where they found a man who's in his 50s. He had been shot in his upper body. That man was taken to a hospital by ambulance. The police say his wounds were not life-threatening. They are still looking for the shooter, though, someone who took off in a car. The police tell us that same car came back to the scene later, but the shooter was no longer inside. They did spend some time talking to other people to try to figure out what happened. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All I can say is good thing we're at the end of the show because <laughs> some technical things here in the studio. But thinking a look at uh, traffic, things looking mostly okay, but we do have some delays. We were watching this Loop 410 at I-10 East, uh, seeing some red there on the map, so watch out for that. Coming in from New Braunfels, 25 minutes, 29 minutes from Seguin, 24 minutes on I-10. 1604 at Hausman, traffic starting to build, Mike. Thank you, sir, and uh, a lot of sunshine out there this morning. Grab your sunglasses and... Make sure you got the air conditioning going and we have a heat index right now of 79 temperatures about 77. So not bad as far as the heat index is concerned, although that 95 later on today is going to be feeling closer to 100, maybe a shower thunderstorm off to the northwest. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you. Thank you for joining us today and have a great Monday. See you back here at nine.